Hello everyone, uh, I am Vibhur Agarwal. Uh, the title of this talk is Graph NLI, a graph-based natural language inference model for polarity prediction in online debates. So this work is with my collaborators, Sagar and Peter from King's College London, and with my advisor, Professor Nisha. Uh, we are part of the uh, dance group here at University of Surrey. So the, uh, so the internet has enabled people to participate in sharing their views freely, often as posts or comments in discussions. Uh, let's take an example of a online social media platform, Twitter, uh, that allows users to freely express their opinion online. Let's exam for example, let's understand this uh, like tweet related to the ongoing conflict between, uh, uh, between Ukraine and Russia, so these kind of very popular tweets can can become very popular and attract lots of discussions online. For example, here it has about 2,700 retweets and more than 9,000 of likes. Similarly, if you look at other social media platforms such as Reddit, where here it's a subreddit called r slash Europe with about 3 million members. And this particular discussion thread is again related to the conflict and with an upward of 27,000 upwards and about 2,500 comments. So these online discussions can grow in a, such a large scale and these social media platforms are very, very loosely moderated. But in case of extreme scenarios, like the recent one where Reddit had to quarantine r slash Russia subreddit because it was full of misinformation. So uh, these online discussions, because of their large nature, uh, they can uh, go unregulated and can pose a variety of real world challenges such as hate speech, where uh, people can, uh, can spread hate speech online uh, freely as part of while discussing uh, in these uh, online discussions. Second is uh, they can spread misinformation and fake news. And third is uh, the filter bubble, which is a phenomenon where people are only exposed to the, uh, to the comments of like-minded people while they are not exposed to the other side of the story. So this leads to their biased opinion about a particular topic. Uh, so uh, these discussions are in general argumentative in nature. People tend to agree or disagree among themselves. So uh, how can we model this phenomenon? Uh, we use a concept uh, called argumentation theory. So argumentation theory is a branch of AI with a rational and transparent resolution of conflicting arguments. So resolving the conflict means looking for the set of justified or the winning arguments. So uh, these arguments and their interactions are represented by argumentation frameworks. So uh, to represent these online discussions uh, where people may agree or disagree, we use a uh, bipolar argumentation framework. Bipolar because it has two polarity values, attack and support. Let's understand this with an example where A, B, C, D, and E are arguments in a particular discussion. And this arrow signifies that argument B replies argument A, argument C replies argument B, and so on. Here, green color represents support and red indicates uh, attack but that's quite abstract in it. So let's understand uh, with an interesting example. Let's see, uh, uh, let's suppose the argument A is Tweety can fly and argument B is Tweety is a bird and therefore Tweety can fly. So here clearly argument P supports argument A, but if we have another argument C which states that Tweety is a bird, uh, sorry, uh, Tweety is a penguin and therefore it can't fly. So this argument C attacks directly argument B and also the argument A. So, uh, uh, so for this uh, kind of setting, uh, we use a Kialo dataset, which is Kialo is an online debating platform. Let's understand this with an example of a Kialo discussion online, where uh, the topic of discussion is the earth is round and people can either uh, discuss uh, for the supporting or attacking uh, against the debate topic. 
here green color again signifies the support and red signifies an attack. So like here from space, one can clearly see that the earth is round and therefore uh, this argument supports the parent argument. While this one, if the earth were round, oceans would flow away, attacks its parent argument. So in total, in this Kialo data set, uh, it contains 1,560 Kialo discussions with a mean of about 204 argument in each debate. And as we can see in this figure, these debates can naturally take the form of a tree structure where each reply is either supporting or attacking the parent argument. Also, we have found that these Kialo debates are typically balanced with about 40 to 60% as the supporting edges, while the rest being attacks. Uh, also, this Kialo dataset is very rich because Kialo is a highly moderated platform where moderators are assigned to each of these online debates and they make sure that each argument, uh, each comment is an argument uh, discussing the particular thesis topic only. And they assign the polarity values as well. So, we, so for the benefit of the research community, uh, we make this data set publicly available and it can be requested via this link. So now let's formalize the polarity prediction problem. So given an online discussion, the task is to predict the polarities, whether a reply attacks or supports the parent argument. Like in this uh, directory or cyclic graph, we need to uh, find uh, predict these colors, like whether the argument B supports or attacks the argument A. So as, 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 as I said before, these predicting uh, these polarities correctly, can allow us to measure the properties of discussions using the uh, concepts from argumentation theory, such as how controversial discussions are. Also in argumentation theory, polarities can help us to calculate the justified arguments in the debate and therefore uh, help us uh, to read these online discussions because online discussions can grow in such a large scale that it's infeasible to read hundreds and thousands of discussions online. So if we kind of, if we can find out these justified arguments, uh, uh, we can get the holistic view of the discussions. Of course, this polarity prediction is not a very new problem and there is quite a lot of work already being done in the literature, uh, like these following set of, peop uh, of papers. But all this existing work and related work use the local context, that is the parent and child argument that it is replied to. Like here, uh, like here, if we want to predict the polarity between argument A and B, so they just look at the context of argument A and B. That's it. While, uh, so we formulate the research question as, can we improve the, polar uh, the performance on the polarity prediction task by incorporating the global context of the discussion? I mean, looking at the neighboring comments also to get the holistic view of the online discussions. So for this, uh, uh, we develop a three-step methodology. First is representing online debates as directed discussion trees. Uh, so as we have looked at the Kialo dataset, which takes the form of a discussion trees. Once we have these online discussions represented in the form of a tree, uh, the next challenge is how can we actually capture the global context? So we propose a couple of graph forks for that. And then uh, we look at our proposed graph NLI model. So uh, first graph fork is a weighted root seeking graph fork. Here again, let's consider the same Kialo example. Here we have named the nodes as A, B, and C. So a graph fork, so let's suppose for a node C, we need to compute their uh, uh, its embedding so that we can use it for the polarity prediction task. So graph fork basically starts from a given node and up to its road, uh, up to the root node, which is a root seeking graph fork. So uh, in this scenario, since it's a tree, so we have a unique path like from node C to node B, and then from node B to node A, and then the walk ends since we have reached the root node. And it is weighted in the sense that the highest weight is assigned to the parent node, like in case 
the graph work starts from node C. So the highest weight is assigned to node B and uh, then there will be an exponential decay of the weights till the uh, root node. But as we have already seen through the examples, these online uh, debates can grow in such a large scale. So it's not feasible to capture or it's not true uh, to capture hundreds and thousands of comments till we reach the uh, uh, reach the root node. Uh, it's because uh, the surrounding context will be too noisy. And it's a known problem of over smoothing problem in graph machine learning, where, uh, where the lot of context is captured from the surrounding nodes. And thus the resultant uh, node embedding is actually almost indistinguishable and they are very similar uh, among themselves. And therefore the model loses the predictive power. That's why it's important to set up specific walk length. Here empirically, we have found that uh, walk length of five works the best. Now let's look at the second and the more generalized walk, which is a uh, root seeking random walk. Here in this case, uh, let's suppose the random walk starts from node C, but this time no, uh, the walk can not only go to node B, but it can also go to one of the children nodes as well. Uh, but it's still biased in the sense that the highest probability value is assigned to the parent node. So with the highest probability of 75%, the random walk will move from node C to node B. But with the rest 25%, it can either go to one of the children nodes as well. So uh, empirically, we have found that uh, walk length of four works the best in this uh, random walk scenario. So the third is the graph NLI architecture. Once we have obtained all the sampled arguments uh, based on the graph walk of walk length of walk length of L, we infuse uh, uh, we input these L arguments into our a graph LNI model, where first is the BERT embeddings that we obtain from the Roberta model and then average uh, pooling operation to get the uh, resultant argument embeddings. And then here, uh, the node U is actually, in our example, uh, node C, for which we need to compute uh, the final node embeddings. While this node V is actually the aggregated value of all the neighboring nodes, that we sampled using our graph fork technique. So once we get these resultant U and V node embeddings, we concatenate U and V with the uh, element-wise difference, and then uh, the final softmax classifier for the downstream task of polarity prediction. So we compare our graph NLI with the following relevant baselines based on the classification accuracy. First is bag of words with the logistic regression. Second is prompt embeddings, uh, which is uh, rhetorics, which captures the rhetorics of the, uh, of the comments along with the logistic regression model. And the third and the most relevant baseline is the sentence word, which provides uh, the sentence embedding for each of the arguments for the final uh, prediction task. And it's widely used in NLP these days. Uh, fourth is a non trainable word embedding with these graph fox and our neural network architecture. So fourth one is actually like we take the non-trainable BERT embeddings with the graph fork and using a, a neural network architecture, we try to predict the downstream task of polarity prediction. So this architecture is not end-to-end -end trainable. So we evaluate the model. Uh, the data set of discussion trees uh, is divided into 80% of the training set and the rest 10% as the development and the rest 10% as the test set. And the model is trained end to end for four epochs with a batch size of 16 and this learning rate. So let's quickly look at table one, which uh, looks at the accuracy scores of different models trained on Kialo data set for polarity prediction. So as we can see that all the different versions of graph and line performs better than the uh, uh, better than the baselines. And we use different aggregation strategies like summation, average, and weighted average uh, to compute the node embedding V. So uh, as expected in the baselines, sentence bird works the best with an accuracy of about 
79.86 percent and in in case of graph NLI, the highest one is 82.87 percent so uh, for the more detailed analysis uh, we also do the ablation study uh, to basically measure and check the importance of each of the component in a uh, proposed graph NLI model. So, so as we have seen from table one, all the different versions of graph box with graph NLI model perform significantly better than SBIRT. It's because SBIRT just considers the parent and child arguments while graph box are able to capture the neighboring context along with the local context and therefore they can have a holistic view of the discussion. Also, we have found that out of various aggregation strategies like summation average and weighted average, weighted average strategy performs the best. Also, uh, we looked at different concatenation methods and found that concatenation of UV with the element-wise difference of UNV embeddings performs the best. Now, uh, what are the conclusions that we can draw from this study? So this study shows that global context captured through these graph box, along with the local context of the discussions is helpful for the polarity prediction tasks. Ablation study shows that the upstream text that is the parent node and other ancestor nodes in the discussion tree help the model more than the siblings and children replies. It's evident because uh, we use the exponentially weighted uh, uh, weighting mechanism where ancestor nodes turned out to be more beneficial in the, in the polarity prediction task. Also, we found that the importance of these ancestor nodes decreases uh, as the distance from the given node increases. So uh, polarity prediction could be one of the applications, but this graph NLI model is, uh, can be uh, fruitful in other NLP settings as well in case of uh, online uh, discussions such as predicting hate speech, or looking at the set of justified arguments, et cetera, which we would like to explore in the future. Again, I would like to reiterate that we make this model code and data set publicly available for the benefit of the research community. And you can access that with this link. Uh, so now we've come to the end of this presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to ask over here or reach me out on Twitter or feel free to email me. Thanks a lot for listening. Awesome. Thank you, Vibhor, for an excellent presentation. Uh, great work and uh, very interesting, very useful for, uh, for a lot of online discussion, uh, online discussion analysis. Unfortunately, uh, the presentation took almost 18 minutes, so we don't have time uh, for, for uh, Q&A, but there are questions on chat and uh, I'd encourage, so please answer that question on chat. And if others have questions for Vibhor, uh, please, uh, please ask, uh, on, please use the chat functionality.